the C value paradox, which um, if you skipped class, there's a high possibility that you have no idea what this is. So uh, the C value paradox is really simple. Um, people make it out to be more than it is. Uh, it basically means that there's more DNA than necessary. If you can remember that, everything else will uh, be pretty straightforward. Um, the amount of DNA, so let's say uh, this is all of the DNA that we have. Let's pretend we're a bacteria. And so the amount of DNA that we have does not translate into uh, the complexity. So I'm going to draw a pyramid because they're complex. <laughs> um, the amount of DNA that we have does not translate into the complexity of the organism. So if you uh, think about the nucleus as a closed body, um, which it is, it encloses the chromatin. Uh, the cellular nucleus encloses the chromatin. Um, we're going to differentiate and make sure that you guys know the difference um, between chromatin and chromatid because that's really important. So chromatin is the stuff that's inside. Um, and it consists of uh, DNA and proteins. And it's very important to remember the tin, okay? Um, because uh, you'll be confused when we go on to chromatid later. The nucleus has all these pores, and each one of them are about 100 nanometers uh, in length, in width, I should say, and uh, they consist about of approximately 100 proteins. Um, so that's that's not bad. Um, the pores, uh, we'll get back to those, but they allow the transport uh, into and out of the cell. So I'm going to draw uh, what you guys already recognize as a chromosome. Okay, there's a little chromosome, and here's another one. Let's pretend that this, uh, this only has a couple chromosomes in its nucleus. What a chromosome is, uh, is two joint chromatids, and this is why it was important for us to remember chromatid and chromatin. Chromatin is the DNA and the proteins, this, wound up inside of the nucleus, while the chromatid is one half of a metaphase. chromosome. That's really important. Chromatid is half a metaphase chromosome, and chromatin is the DNA and the proteins rolled up all together. Okay, so what we have here in the metaphase chromosome, because metaphase is the part where they're most condensed, uh, are two chromatids. So I'm going to color one of them red. Other one green. These prime colors are always good. And so we have one chromatid there and one chromatid tid here. Okay? Right. So a genome, we'll just get all these out of the way. The genome is all, all of the um, genetic material that makes up an organism. So uh, this means that it's the genes, the stuff that codes, and then you've got all the nonsense stuff. Uh, it used to be called junk DNA. It isn't anymore. 
Um, so that means, if you remember this from class, this means lines and signs. It means transposable elements. All this stuff and more. Um, I just don't have time to get into it here. Uh, is part of uh, the genome. It's all of the DNA. Okay, so what is a gene? Do you guys remember that one? Uh, a gene is just a single uh, coding sequence that codes for an amino acid. So a gene becomes a protein. And what that means, what a protein is, is an expressed, expressed part of the gene. Now a gene consists of more than that, but we can't get into that either. Um, there's just too much information and we're trying to talk about the nucleus, but in order to understand the nucleus, we need to understand the, uh, the chromatins. Chromatids, see, I can make that mistake too. Um, okay. Pores. 100 nanometers in width and approximately 100 proteins is what they consist of. Um, what's important about the pores is that they allow uh, the uh, movement of uh, soluble molecules um, into and out of the uh, nuclear, um, the cellular nucleus, and they don't allow the larger molecules. So if let's say you're some giant molecule and you're trying to get inside, there's there's no way that that's happening, especially if you're fat and you're not mo a water-soluble molecule like, like ions. Those are definitely getting in. So that's important. Um, there are approximately 4,000 uh, pores in the, in the nuclear uh, envelope. And that brings us to the nuclear envelope. So the nucleus consists of a double membrane, just like, just like the eukaryotic cell. And I'm going to talk about that over here. I'm just going to move that over here. Um, there's approximately 10 to 15 nanometers between these two. And that's really important, especially if you're a, a prof is a stickler for numbers. Um, the outer membrane, and I'm sure that you guys will recognize this guy. Very easy to remember. And if you don't, uh, this is the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum. Um, this one's the rough ER, uh, which means that it's studded with ribosomes. And if you don't remember that, then uh, there's a problem and you need to go back and, and read about that in your textbook. Um, the rough ER is connected to the smooth ER, um, but that has nothing to do with the nucleus, so I'm not going to get into it. Maybe in another video. Um, and the interior uh, of the nuclear envelope um, is connected to uh, something called the lamina, which is a scaffolding on the inside of the cell, which is really important because this over here uh, is where the chromosomes that are not in metaphase because you know a cell only puts its chromosomes in metaphase when it's ready to uh, to divide. Um, this is where the chromosome will connect if it is to not be actively translating. 